Here's a great demonstration for you. I've got the 1989 Loma Prieta Saratoga Avenue record in two directions. The distance is eight and a half kilometers, so it's a relatively near field record at a VS30 of 381 kilometers per second. On the top left, you can see in real time the ground motion at the base of your single degree of freedom system. I've got two directions, two different components of horizontal excitation. I've got these quote unquote single degree of freedom oscillators, but they're actually in two directions uncoupled, but it doesn't really matter because it's an elastic system. Anyways, each one of these oscillators has a different period, stiffness or mass. Therefore, I have a range between 0 0.01 seconds and 10 seconds. On the top right, you see in the two orthogonal directions, the response of these individual oscillators. You can see there's different types of responses. There's the long period response that are oscillating with much longer waves, but large displacements. And then you've got the high frequency response of the shorter period oscillators. So you see that in the graphs on the top right, but then you also see it on the bottom figure. What is most interesting about this figure is not just the fact that you have different amplitude and different frequency of response, but look at that. They actually have different relative components or effective direction. This is really important when you start looking at bidirectional response and you're looking at the fault normal, fault parallel response. They're different for different periods, and it's not like one response of one period is directly proportional to that of a different period. What's interesting is you see it, it's oscillating some with very small displacements at high frequencies, large displacements with longer periods, as I've already said before. And you see the effective component is actually different for different periods and at different times. Now, to compute the response spectrum, you're actually gonna determine the maximum displacement of each one of these periods they will be in different directions and at different times in the response. So I'm gonna let you watch this. It's kind of fun and it's a great way of actually visualizing what's going on with an elastic oscillator in two dimensions.
Thank you for sitting through this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. If you want to learn more about this type of material, please make sure you visit Sylvia's Brainery, silviamazzoni.thinkific.com. Thank you.